Hey, so we have Amberland's Let's Talk episode 6 from December 14th. We're going to take a look at it. I was going to combine this with the other upload she did for December, but this uh, this ended up being a little longer than I thought it would be. So I'm going to upload the others in a separate video, maybe a couple. So let's see what Amberlynn's being honest about. Probably nothing. It's probably just clickbait because she seems to be on her clickbait title phase. We have Amber Lynn's Let's Talk episode six. She's being honest about something. Um, probably clickbait, but let's let's give it a listen. Hey guys, welcome to Let's Talk number six. So what she's doing, I would say, isn't necessarily unique. <laughs> so I heard this on the last video I watched, and that's Alex's shook. So I find find it funny that since Alex said that he doesn't want to be associated with her, she's using a clip of his <laughs> in her opening. Um, all right. Got to speed her up. So I'm not gonna lie, I kind of wish I had a better name for this segment because let's talk, like, okay, whatever. I want something more like catchy and fun. So I need to like really think about it. So I hope you guys are having a really good Tuesday. My Tuesday so far has just consisted of cleaning and I've also been scrapbooking. I have been obsessed with scrapbooking. I'm gonna be showing you guys in a future video all of my scrapbooking stuff because <laughs> I'm obsessed. So I told you guys, let's get personal. So I'm curious to what kind of personal things you guys want me to talk about. So let's go. Do you ever get nervous about people in real life seeing you and your girlfriend together? Do you avoid going? Places together how would you navigate that situation if the picture got leaked it's definitely something we have thought about talked about if it happens it happens there's i just like right. situations like that where if you are in public and someone saw us snap a picture it's kind of something that we just have to accept i know it's kind of a lame answer but literally like there's absolutely no other answer that i give i don't know how many people in your area amberlynn knows who you are um i mean you do have a large number of followers but like one hundred and seventy-five thousand, but it's not like the paparazzi is following you around. As you've taken time to look back at some of your older videos, do you have any regrets about your behavior, things that you've shared or stuff you didn't do? If so, how will you take those lessons moving forward? The biggest regret that I have on YouTube is sharing my story about a toxic relationship I was in. I just shouldn't have shared that. That is my absolute biggest regret. There also have been a few times where... You were probably the toxic one in that relationship, let's be honest. You're talking about, what, Casey is his name? Is he transgender now? I regretted sharing my cancer diagnosis because I went through a few months where people were calling me a liar. And on top of already having cancer, having to deal with people calling me a liar about having cancer was truly freaking rough. Some other things I regret is like the super hard trolling, like the whole rotisserie chicken, knowing damn well I wasn't going to eat it all. Um, there was a time where I ordered like 20 wings, knowing I was only going to eat three. Or like a whole shrimp platter, knowing I was only going to eat like 100 calories of it. You know, things like that. I don't, I don't mind a little troll moment. I, I don't. Yeah, we, we know you don't, and since you've admitted to doing that trolling in the past, people now expect it from you. So that's why people don't trust you, and it's sad that you don't see that. I think it's funny. It's humorous. As long as you're not hurting yourself or anyone else, it's totally fine. But I feel like those situations were just, like, too extreme. Like, it almost felt like I was promoting super unhealthy eating as a morbidly obese person and it's kind of weird for me to think about now will i eat those things in the future absolutely will i eat fast food in the future yes but there's a way to go about living a normal life while eating those things versus like hi i'm gonna troll it's I'm about moderation eat, which you said doesn't, doesn't seem kind of, to work for you anymore honestly. and right now as the person that i am the person i'm trying to become i will never do that type of trolling ever again for you or anyone else that you know affected by the tornadoes i hope you're all okay thank you so much i've actually had a lot of people reach out about the tornadoes thankfully everything's good here it was just a really really bad storm uh where i live and honestly i kind of like slept through it which is yeah, the tornadoes were really bad. They came through where I live as well. I invited them to stay at your apartment and was constantly talking about how much you love them. Would you be okay with it? Would you not feel hurt or like your boundaries were being pushed? Okay, so I'm going to answer this completely honest. There's a big part of me that wants to be like, no, I'd be totally fine. Like, invite her over. But if the roles were reversed, yes, it would have hurt me a lot. I think the reason why Becky and I thought it was okay to bring my girlfriend here was because Becky wasn't hurting after the breakup, she was happy. She felt free. I don't know. The yeah. breakup was very different compared to like other breakups. I do feel bad for. So, so after the breakup, Becky said that she still loved you and she was hurting. So, I think you're projecting, and 
I mean, it, it, any kind of breakup when you've been with someone for four years and you're engaged is going to be painful. So I don't, I don't care for you speaking for Becky in, in this type of instance. I, I, I don't like it. Her talking about the new relationship so much in front of Becky because I didn't realize that it was upsetting her a little bit. Or maybe it wasn't. Like, I, I really don't know. But, like, I, I do feel bad about it. But on the other hand, she broke up with me. You know, this is my apartment. And if I want to have someone come visit me, then I should be allowed to do that. Just because someone breaks up with you doesn't mean they don't still love you or they aren't hurting from it. Sometimes people break up for a myriad of reasons. It, it it doesn't mean they're not hurting. And for you to be like, oh, this is my apartment suddenly now after you and Becky break up, that's kind of shitty of you. Because Becky stopped working because you wanted her to. You're like, oh, I can support us. It's fine. That, mm, no. That, thankfully, when they met, they got along. There was like no awkwardness or anything like that. Can you talk about your life when you were younger versus now money-wise? I'm curious because you talked about being poor in the past and now you can buy more things like Legos or whatever. How does it feel to be able to do that now when you basically grew up with nothing? I was actually just talking to my girlfriend about this. So a really good example is last year when my mom came to visit me, I moved literally two days before I was supposed to get a full-fledged hysterectomy and I wanted everything put away. Like I didn't want to come home from my surgery with boxes everywhere. So me, Becky, and my mom, we like went crazy. Like we were putting away everything and something my mom helped me put away was my clothes. As she was hanging up my dresses, she started crying. My, being my mom both very emotional so I totally get it but I was like mom why are you crying like you're just hanging on my dresses she like looked around my closet and she was like look how many clothes do you have like and then she brought up memories of like when I was younger I literally only had like one pair of pants I only had one shirt I literally wore the same thing to school every single day I literally grew up with nothing like it's crazy that you know I can just go to the grocery store and buy whatever I want but when I was younger we didn't have money for food so we would get free food every Saturday we would get like a box of free food that got delivered uh, to us and it's just like little things like that where it's just like wow I don't know if that you know I can really relate to this myself. You know, growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. My mom was on social security disability and we got, um, what's it called? Commodities ourselves every Saturday. Um, you know, growing up after I was like, I think seven or eight years old, eight years old, maybe, you know, it was just me and mom because my brother and sister had graduated high school and moved out, you know, and you know, doing clothes shopping at Walmart each year before school, mom would take out a small loan from the bank to get me some school clothes. And, you know, it was plain solid color shirts because they were the cheapest, you know, and um, so my mom So my mom passed away 10 years ago. So she didn't get to see me be successful and buy a house and have a good job. You know, to be able to just buy something because I want it, because I can afford it, because I have a good salary. I mean, it is just me. I don't have any kids or or partners. So it's just me that I'm taking care of. You know, I, I try to help friends or family out if if they need help, if I'm able to when I can. So I'm glad that Amberlynn at least has that moment with her mom for her mom to see her being able to take care of herself and be self-sufficient and, you know, be happy. Well, that took an emotional turn for me. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> has anything to do with maybe the reason why I have a shopping addiction because like I wasn't used to that life when I was younger so now I'm just like oh my god I have the money so let's like spend it all like another good example is like school dances I love me a school dance they always costed money and my parents didn't have that money looking back how long did you have lymphedema before you noticed were you ever treated for it no I have never been treated for lymphedema it's really weird I remember the year that it happened I remember why it happened I remember how it happened but it's like it happened overnight like I remember one day literally just being like uh oh it looks like I got lymphedema it was during a very like depressing stage of my life so you haven't been diagnosed with it, but you know you have it. I mean, you've been to doctors multiple times. You've been to your doctor a lot. I'm sure your doctor has said, yes, you have lymphedema. I, where I literally stayed in my bed constantly. It was because like mental health problems. It was because like I was so big, I couldn't even walk for over a minute. That is when it started to form. And it's like, I'm constantly wondering, like, if I didn't go through like that bed bound moment, would I have lymphedema right now? Like it's something that I literally torture myself with. with like the constant thoughts of it. Bed bound moment. Hmm. Getting it treated. Uh, is something that I really need to look into. Like, I know lymphedema never goes away, but like, you can 
do things to help it. Are you ever gonna let your audience see more of the inside of your apartment and actually go outside for once? I go outside every day. I like to walk majority of the days. I just, I don't find any fun in filming myself walking unless I'm doing like a time lapse. But if you wanna see more of my apartment, here's a little glimpse, a little glimpsey. I mean, maybe I can show more of the apartment like in a future video. It's just not really something that I think about. Someone actually commented below mm -hmm. that question and said, does she have to leave though? To be fair, a lot of vloggers slash other channels don't really go anywhere. And she does show the dog walks, even if it's just the dog, which is more respectful in my mind than to film random neighbors, just saying. And I completely agree with you. It was scary and sad to see you deal with the camp. Yeah, I mean, I don't think she necessarily needs to go outside all the time. But I mean, I think people want to see that because she was sitting on a couch for so long doing live streams. And, you know, since she is trying to lose weight, people like to see her doing something physical up walking outside. I, I totally get that. I have to leave though. But to be fair, a lot of vloggers slash other channels don't really go anywhere. And she does show the dog walks, even if it's just the dog, which is more respectful in my mind than to film random neighbors, just saying. And I completely agree with you. It was scary and sad to see you deal with a cancer diagnosis. Since then, however, we haven't seen much of a change in behavior as now you're slipping back into old habits. If a cancer diagnosis wasn't enough to motivate you to change, and a nicer, more supportive audience isn't either, what will? So I don't understand what you mean when you say that I'm slipping back into old habits because what? I think tomorrow will be my ninth weigh in for you guys in a row what like i'm literally actively losing weight i'm down over 80 pounds i don't know what i'm doing now that has any relation to like my old habits i've seen a lot of people say that like i'm slipping into phase two i just i'm i, I think it's because you're getting clickbaity with your titles um like this one you know being honest about something maybe we haven't got to that question yet but so far i haven't really caught anything that you're being honest about that makes it sound like you've lied about something um you know, people with the with the ordering out, I think, um, is what people are talking about, seeing you, yeah, slip back into that takeout constantly phase. I'm so confused now. I feel like a lot of people just, like, want that to happen at this point. Like, I literally see comments where people are like, I bet it's going to happen before Christmas. And I'm just like, why? Why? How about we just, like, support each other and lift each other up? But I will say, without a doubt, I should have lost this weight a lot sooner. I just know that after I got diagnosed with cancer and I had a hysterectomy, my hormones were absolutely insane. Like, my body was trying to go through menopause while I was taking a little tiny estrogen pill. Not only that, but my mental health was just, like, through the roof. Because I'm over here like, okay, I just got diagnosed with cancer. I literally just had all my... You know, that's... She has a point there. I mean, her 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 body was out of whack mentally. She wasn't in a good place. It's 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 got to be rough absolutely but you know she's in a good place now and she's doing better let's hope she stays on that course my female parts just taken out of me i could no longer have a child and it wasn't just that i constantly was just like what if my cancer spread what if i get cancer again like it was a lot of mental health problems and you think that would scare me into like wanting to change and lose weight and all this stuff instead it did the reverse effect it made me want to numb myself and you would think back to my freaking heaviest weight by like three pounds but something that i really really want to stand by it's never too late to change so I'm going to accept that I did not change sooner because all I can do is move forward. Do you ever think that you'd be a YouTuber one day? Are you happy with what you do? When I first started YouTube, I did not expect it to become a job. But like the more I did it, the more I hoped for it. And I was like, can you imagine? It's a good thing it did because I don't know what and else you would be like doing. Happen. And yes, I can without a doubt say that I am happy being a YouTuber. Of course, there's pros and cons to it. There, I feel like there's pros and cons to probably like every job out there. And of course, yeah, there's things that I would love to change. But, but I'm you so wouldn't know. this opportunity. I just, sometimes I'm just still in shock by it, I think. Because it's like, wow, like I have a roof over my head because people want to hear me talk. I don't know, it's kind of kind of crazy, really. Yeah. Coffee receipt from McDonald's was heavily cropped, and under the total, it said free food. It was cropped because it showed the address of the McDonald's, and obviously, I didn't want to share the address. But here, you can see the original thing. I'm just going to cross off the address. I don't really know what the free food thing was. So have you ever considered a therapist who specializes in binge eating disorders? The therapist I have now actually does, which I love, and that's why she's good. Good intuitive eating, counting calories, following my meal plans, counting points, carbs. That's a really big thing that triggers binge eaters into binging. I've actually been told this by by dietitians, by nutritionists, by doctors. So I definitely trust her word for it. I just don't think intuitive eating is right for me in this moment because my goal is to lose weight. And let's be real. Let's be real. Intuitively, I want hot Cheetos. And I just know I shouldn't have those. Is it true that your you know, is it's imaginary? Yes, my girlfriend is fake. Craving and intuitive eating are two different things. That's You don't understand what intuitive eating is. I think you need to talk to your therapist and have her explain to you what intuitive eating is because you're not getting it. I just, I don't know. I'm lonely and I wanted to feel like I wasn't. And so I thought by making up a girlfriend, it would help. Are you now better able to identify early triggers for I wasn't? And let's be real. What? Let's be real. Intuitively, I want hot Cheetos. And I just know I didn't have those. Is it true that your girlfriend is imaginary? Yes, my girlfriend is fake. I just, I don't know. I'm lonely and I wanted to feel like I wasn't. And so I thought by making up a girlfriend, it would help. Are you now better able to identify early <laughs> triggers for or symptoms? Of I'm 99.9% .9 sure that that's sarcasm. <laughs> 
Are you going to stay in that apartment? That's good, at least. I actually will be moving. Um, I'm going to follow oh. through with the lease I recently signed. And then once the lease is over, I will be moving. And I'm actually going to be moving out of state. So... To New York, maybe, where wifey is? Or Seattle? Hmm. This will be interesting to see where she moves to. And I think this lease is up in, what, like January or something? Unless she signed a new one for, like, a few months or six months. I'm going to be leaving Kentucky, y'all. Um, It's kind of bittersweet, to be honest. Like, it makes me a little bit sad. Like, I used to hate Kentucky, but it's also, like, I feel like I need a home here. Like, you, I've been in this apartment for a couple years now, and it's like I'm to Kentucky. You hate Somehow Kentucky. Really but I just feel like, you know... Maybe I need to move on. Okay, last question is, were you ever in love with Becky to begin with? I love Becky unconditionally. Like, like I loved her like family. I would have taken a bullet for her without a doubt. I'm just not entirely sure I was actually in love, which is okay. But I loved her with all my heart. And what do you mean, which is okay? No, that's not okay. Because you wasted four years of Becky's time. How is that okay? Why are you forgiving yourself for how you treated someone else or for how you felt. That's like saying, oh, well, I beat this person up, but that's okay. No, that's not okay. And I gave her everything that I had. And I believe that she did the same. I believe that we both tried our best and it just didn't work. All right, guys, so I hope that you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Just the audacity that she has sometimes what was she being honest about? Was it saying that, oh, my girlfriend's fake, whenever it was clearly sarcasm, as far as I could tell. And then was it the Becky thing about not knowing if she was ever in love with Becky? I mean, I can see being in a relationship with someone and then an ending and being like, oh, okay, well, I loved this person, but I wasn't in love with them. But you've talked about how you faked the emotions with the engagement, how you tried to make yourself cry. That should have been a sign. So why did you continue the relationship and just string Becky along and waste her time? It's, that's, that's not okay. It really isn't. I... I don't know. <sighs> well, that was Amber Lynn's Let's Talk from December 14th. She asked people to get personal, but I didn't say anything really super personal. I mean, I left some of the less interesting things in there, like the McDonald's receipt. Um, but I left in like the things about Becky and about her saying that she made up a girlfriend. So she did make up a girlfriend. She's been doing a lot to make her seem real. And I would say that she needs to talk to her therapist about those issues if she really did make up a girlfriend. But I think she does have a girlfriend. Um, it could still be wifey. It could be someone else. We don't know. But the whole being honest about something is just clickbait. So she's trying to get those views back. I don't think it's working, but we'll see what happens in the coming new year. So that being said, happy new year to all of you. I hope you had a wonderful holiday. Be safe and take care.